Hey students, good morning to you. Thursday morning. Hope you guys are having a great week. Seniors, two more days of class, Friday and Monday, and off to the Big Apple. Happy for you guys. Hope you have a great time up there. Tara, <coughs> well, Tara, Tara, what can I say? <laughs> You'll be there next week, and you have class because of the Stanford Achievement Test. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, Monday, we're all taking the test together. One big happy family. I will not be there. Um, Megan knows this. Her brother is in my Algebra 2 class that I teach, but I teach an Algebra 2 class Monday from 9 to 11, so I will not be there to give you your test. That's why in the past I've never given tests on Monday or came in on Monday or Thursday. Those are the two days I teach another class, so um, I will not be there, but I will have a video with the test up on the screen, and you'll have a test at your desk, and I'll go over it with, on the video with you just like I'm there in class and anything I say you're allowed to write on your test and all of that so it'll be just like I'm there but you will not be able to ask me questions <coughs> on Monday so do understand that but then Tara probably Wednesday we'll just go over your test via video and Friday I'm not sure what we'll do we're not going to cover anything new because the seniors will miss it and so uh, but anyways um, test on Monday test on Monday you owe me nothing now, the reason I say that, I did give you homework yesterday, but it was a Wednesday night. So on a day like that, I mean, if you're in class, I give you 100. Whatever you did in class, you get credit for. So uh, you don't have to turn it in. If you do the entire assignment tonight, uh, or if you did the entire assignment last night, excuse me, um, <coughs> uh, then, you're, uh, then you'll get two bonus points, okay? But... Uh, you do not need to turn anything in today. Now, um, I have a little bone to pick with you guys. And you're probably going to say, oh, oh, Mr. Earhart has a temper. I'm not mad. I'm laughing. It hurts you guys, not me. But Mr. Harmon said that he came in class on Wednesday, yesterday, and wanted to collect Tuesday night's homework. And according to him, um, and I've, I've only known Mr. Harmon to lie four or five times since I've known him. I'm kidding. But um, he said that you guys said you didn't get through the whole video. There was like three minutes left, and so you didn't know you had homework. Now, and <laughs> again, I'm laughing. Um, I've got three seniors and a junior in that class. And as the old saying goes, common sense is not very common. Um, and I'm sure you all got common sense most of the time. But I would think common sense would kind of dictate that you... Um, I didn't want to do that. I would think that common sense kind of dictates that you uh, go home and finish the video. But nonetheless, that's fine. I am a team player all the way. And there we go. And I will be, um, I will not count Tuesday's assignment for anyone. So there you go. I am, because you're going to have to know it anyways. I mean, on the test, on you kind of hurt yourself because you're going to have to know that material on Monday's test. So um, there we go. Uh, th please don't do that again. I mean, if the video doesn't finish, there's three minutes left. I mean, my goodness, I know a lot of math teachers who teach all 50 minutes and then give their students three minutes of homework. So I believe I'm very reasonable for the most part. Anyways, all right, now we are going to warm our brains up, those muscles that God has given you, and allow you to earn a couple bonus points. Now, all these bonus points you've been earning all go in your account. Now, when you took your quiz last week on Friday, all your bonus points are gone. I don't care if you put them on your quiz or not. You guys know how that works. And Tara, you're kind of figuring it out. You're having me for the first time. But all of your bonus points were empty. Now, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and today, Thursday, I'm trying to give you guys some more bonus points. Now, all these bonus points will not be used for quite a while because we're not going to have a quiz for quite a while. So you can actually, like uh, last night, if you went home and did your homework, you got two bonus points. If you didn't, well, then you didn't. But in class now, I'm going to give you a chance to earn a couple bonus points, okay? So I would like you to turn over to, very quickly please, page 514. Page 514, and I want you to do numbers 20 and 21. Now, um, those are <coughs> volume problems. Number 20 is a pyramid. Go ahead and turn over there while I'm rambling. 21 is a cone. Now, when you see 21, it's like a funnel you would use to pour fluid into. Don't worry about that little knob that's sticking out the bottom. You'll see it when you turn over there. Just ignore that. Um, just kind of cut that off. It's not a trick problem. Just use the dimensions they give you, a radius of 5 centimeters and a height of 8 centimeters. 
and go ahead and find the volume of that cone, okay? So go ahead and do those two problems. Each one is worth a bonus point. I told you yesterday, I'm going to start shutting the video off. There's no need for me to sit here and waste five minutes of my time. I'm not being mean. There's no need for that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Um, and so you guys need to go ahead. And when I tell you to, I need you to pause the video, work these problems out, then turn it back on when you're done. So go ahead and pause the video. Now at this time, work on these two problems. Thank you. Okay, if you've unpaused the video, that means you are finished, and I hope that's the case. Let's start with number 20, students, number 20. All right, in order to find the volume of a pyramid, the formula is one-third capital B times H. B stands for the area of the base, H stands for the height. I'm going to go ahead and put the height in for three. That's pretty easy. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring my one-third down. Now, my base right here, I'm going to highlight it for you or outline it. My base, oh, they get, look at that. They hooked you up. Look at that. They gave you the area of the base, capital B. I didn't even know that. Wow, am I a nice guy or what, giving you a problem like that? Okay, well, anyways, um, you know the area of the base. They give it to you. It's 16. So there we go. All right? So the answer would be 16. If you take one-third times 16, you'll get 48. Um, excuse me, you'll get three, uh, five and one-third. And then if you take 5 and 1 third times 3, you will get 16 cubic inches. Now, I hope you got it right. If you did, give yourself one bonus point. If you didn't, ask some friends for help. Back it up. Watch this again. Whatever you got to do, okay? All right. Moving on. Now, let's find the volume of a cone. Now, pretend this wasn't even here. I told you guys just to cut that off not worry about it. It's kind of in the way type of thing. Now... <coughs> the, how you find the volume of a cone is one-third capital B times H, which is one-third times area of the base times height. Now, if you're confused about the base, um, you really shouldn't be. I mean, we can just see, just flip this thing around like that and put it up here and then get rid of this thing right here. And you see what I'm saying? In fact, I can actually kind of, I mean, if you flip it around, you can see now it's setting on a base. That's a circle, okay? Now, if, I mean, if you didn't know to do that, I'm sorry, but we've done some problems like that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back around so we can actually see the numbers. But anyways, I asked you to find the volume of this cone. And the formula is right there off to the side. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the height in. The height is 8. Do you all see that okay? Here it is right here. The height is 8. Now next, they want us to find the area of the base. Now here's the base. It's a circle. I'm outlining it for you right now. Well, how do you find the area of a circle? Isn't it pi r squared? Sure it is. And then bring down your one-third. So let's go ahead and bring that one-third down like I just said. Sorry about that little interruption here. I'm not sure if you guys hear the phone ringing or not, but we took care of that, and here we go. Now, how do you find the area of a circle? Well, it's pi r squared, so I really have one-third, and then 3.14 times 5 is the radius, so 5 squared times 8. Now I'm going to grab my calculator real quick and type this in, so give me just a second. 1 third times 3.14 times 25 times 8. I'm getting 209.3. Now, if you rounded somewhere else, I'm not that picky about that, but the approximate answer is 209.3 centimeters cubed. So there we go. That is for one bonus point. So we just reviewed how to find the volume of a cone and how to find the volume of a pyramid. Okay? All right, let's move on. Let's take some notes now. Um, to give you some closure, we're going to look at uh, one topic today covering two different small parts. We're going to look at four problems today and then give you about, oh, 12 problems in homework. Um, <clears throat> it'll be due tomorrow, so have your homework done. And then Friday when you come into class, no teaching, I will give you a review sheet, okay? So here we go. Please copy this heading in your notes. Volume and surface area of spheres. All right. Lesson 9.6, and the date today is the 11th. So take a second and copy that down. You do not need to... Um, I'm looking for something here. You do not need to uh, draw what I'm drawing. I'm just trying to show you in case there's any question as to what a sphere is. It'd be like a basketball or a volleyball.
trying to give you a little picture. That's what we're talking about when we say spheres, all right? Um, so volume and surface area of spheres, less than 9, 6, and the date's the 11th. Okay, well, let's get after this, shall we? Here we go. We're going to learn to do two things today to a sphere, all right? I have a hard time saying that word. Anyways, we're going to learn to do two things. I'm sure you guys are laughing. Volume and surface area. Got it? So here we go. Would you copy this down? That is the formula that you're going to need to know. And let me pause right now and tell you. Go ahead and copy this down while I'm talking. Mr. Earhart, we cannot take any more formulas. Well, on the test, I told you it's going to be matching. And once you match them up, you can then use the formulas the rest of the test. So I d I'm not asking you to memorize them. Just associate them with their the formulas with what they do and then you can match them and go from there so but anyways surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared that is the formula for finding surface area got it all right go ahead and copy that down this is the formula for finding the volume of a sphere 4 thirds pi r squared now surface area means the outside in other words i've got what I think I got a tennis player in the room, a volleyball player, a couple of volleyball players, and I think Tara plays soccer. If you were to take a volleyball or a soccer ball and rip it open and take the bladder out of it, the thing that you blow up, and just take the skin, the leather, and spread it out flat and find the area of that, that's surface area. But the volume is how much space is on the inside. So volume would do be dealing with how much air you pump into a volleyball or how much air you pump into a soccer ball or a basketball or whatever, <coughs> or a golf ball. I guess they don't take air, do they? Very bad illustration, but you get the point. So um, the formula for surface area is 4 pi r squared, and the surface area for volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r squared. So with that in mind, we're now going to work two problems and then give you the rest of the time to work on your homework, and hopefully you'll get a lot done in class. So here we go. Problem number one. I don't need you to copy the picture into your notes. Just write down where it's located, okay? We've been doing that a lot in this chapter because we're dealing with a lot of pictures, and there's no need for you to work on your art skills in math class at 8.15 in the morning. Okay, please copy down page 517, example 1A. You can turn your book or you can just look up at the screen. Either way is fine. I want you to find the surface area of this basketball looking object, okay? Well, how you find the surface area is 4 pi r squared. So we bring down the 4. For pi, I simply substitute 3.14. And then for the radius, notice they give it to you. The radius is 8. It's 8 squared. Now, hopefully, if you know how to use your calculator correctly, this becomes a simple problem. It's just 4 times 3.14 times 64, because 8 times 8 is 64. And you will get this answer right here if you've done it correctly. And, I, of course, they might round to a different place in your book, but 803.84. Now, hold it. Did we find volume or surface area? Someone tell me. Good, nice job, surface area. So we're going to call this square inches. Square inches, not cubic. Cubic is volume, square units is area. Okay, let's go on to the next one. In fact, I'm going to go bonus point. Kind of crazy on you here. So for one bonus point, I'm going to go ahead. You can, you can pause the video in a second. I want you to go ahead and find the surface area of this sphere on your own for one bonus point. Now, I want to say one thing to help you. Notice they don't give you the radius. They give you the diameter. So you're going to have to know how to find this radius right here. It's not exactly rocket science, but nonetheless, I wanted to point that out to you, okay? So if you want to turn your book, you can, or you can just look at the screen. But no matter what, write this in your book, please, or in your notebook so you know where it's coming from. I'm going to uh, go ahead and pause the video now at this time and work on the problem. When everybody's done, look back up, and we'll see if you got the bonus points. Okay, here we are. <coughs> hopefully, hopefully everybody's done. We're going to find the surface area of this sphere. So I bring the 4 down. For pi, I substitute 3.14. And hopefully you figured out the radius was 5, half of 10. So 5 squared. Now, again, if you know how to use your calculator correctly, it's 4 times 3.14 times 25. And you will get 314. Now we're dealing with area, so it would be square centimeters, not cubic. Square centimeters. All right, moving on. 
we have just done two problems on finding the surface area of a sphere. Now we're going to move on to volume, okay? Pretty simple stuff, students. It's just plug in numbers and type them in and spit out an answer. As long as you can memorize this formula, okay, you're going to be home free. All right, I'd like you to write in your notes, page 518, example 2A. Now you can turn there or just look at the screen. I recommend that you just look at the screen. That's up to you. Here's the formula that I gave you earlier for finding volume of a sphere, okay? Well, let's go ahead and find the volume um, of the sphere. Here we go. Uh, something I wanted to say, I'm drawing a blank on. Okay, never mind, that's the next problem. All right, let's go ahead and find the volume. So you bring down your 4 thirds. For pi, you substitute 3.14. And now for the radius, you substitute 2 because the radius is 2. Okay? And now again, if you know how to use your calculator well, um, you would type in 4 thirds times 3.14 times 4, and you'll get the correct answer. And what you should get is 16.75. I rounded that. Um, oh, you know what? I think I might have, but if I gave a wrong formula, that's going to be really embarrassing, but that's okay. It happens to the best of us. Not that I'm the best, but... Yes, I apologize. This should be, boy, I feel really bad, students, but you know what? When you make a mistake, you just admit it, and there's no way I'm starting this video over. No way. This should be a three right here, and I apologize. I knew that, and then what I did is I think I cut and pasted that and put a V with it, and so that's why I didn't catch that mistake, but this should be a three, so four-thirds pi r cubed. If anyone left the room and didn't get that, you be sure and tell that student when they come back, okay? And I feel really bad. Of course, it's going to be like that throughout here because I cut and pasted the, the, the one side. So let's make that a 3, and now let's make that a 3. And again, I really wish I could back up time. Um, I don't feel bad making mistakes. I feel bad for you because it could confuse you. But anyways, um, it's too late now, so 4 thirds, um, <coughs> excuse me. 4 thirds times 3.14 times 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and you will get 33.49. I rounded that, 33.49. Now we're dealing with volume, so it would be cubic feet, cubic feet. There we go, look at that. All right, so that's the volume of the sphere. Let's do one more, and I'm going to turn you loose on your homework. It's been a pretty quick lesson for today. Um, there we go. Now notice here, go ahead and write this in your notes, would you please? Page 518, example 2B. Go ahead and copy that into your notes. And we're going to find the volume of this half of a basketball or half of a soccer ball or whatever you want to call it, this half a sphere, okay? <coughs> now really it's not that hard. You just go ahead and find the entire volume. And when you're done, what do you think you divide by? Exactly, good, too. You divide by two. So let's go ahead and let's find the volume of this half of a sphere, and let's see how we do. All right, uh, first of all, this should be a three, of course. Again, I just cut and pasted that down through there, so there we go. Apologize again for that. So we have four-thirds times 3.14 times 5 to the third power. All right, so there's my substitutions. Now, if you know how to use your calculator, you should be getting pretty quick at this now, times 3.14, and then times 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. I'm getting this right here. This is not your final answer. I'm getting 523.3 repeating. Now, that's the volume if we had, oh, that was really nice, wasn't it? If, I had, if we had the entire basketball. I don't feel like I'm doing this drawing very much credit. I'm giving up anyways. Um, but we don't. We have half of a sphere. So we're going to take this answer, obviously, and divide it by 2. So let's go ahead and divide this by 2 because we're trying to find half of the volume. And you should get approximately, depending on where you rounded, 261.6 repeating. We were looking for volume, so it would not be inches squared. It would be inches cubed. And there we go. I hope you've done well on this. I have kept it short. Um, <clears throat> and from now on, if a video never finishes, ask Mr. Harmon. I mean, he's there. He's pretty visual throughout the day. Ask him what the name of the video was. 
and he'll tell you and you can finish it at home just three four minutes I'm not that long winded usually and then you can do the homework anyways here's your homework assignment while you're copying that down remember if you need help on this assignment it's bag Berean Academy geometry 9-6 homework all right there you go and so that homework is due tomorrow work on that now during class get as much done as possible and turn that in tomorrow and you'll have a review sheet tomorrow hope you guys have a great day and maybe I'll tell a couple New York stories tomorrow before I give the review sheet I actually lost two young ladies on the senior trip that I took my seniors to New York City at a baseball game in the Bronx that's back in the old New York Yankee Stadium back in the Bronx it was really at nighttime about 10 o'clock at night and maybe I'll tell that story tomorrow it's humorous and also a little scary but uh Hope you guys are getting ready for your trip. Let's work on your homework, and we will see you tomorrow. Review sheet tomorrow and test on Monday.